Hey guys, welcome back here to Chaos Town. We're going to do another video here today, and this is a relatively simple reaction. We are going to be making lead nitrate, and you only need two reagents for this. You need your nitric acid, which I showed you how to make in a previous video. The red or the white teeming varieties can be used for this, it doesn't really matter. You need some elemental lead which I have right here, and this is about 20 grams. Don't need to worry about having stoichiometric mounts for this reaction, because you can always add more nitric acid later. And then we just need a uh, vessel to put it in. I'm just going to use this little beaker here. And the first thing we want to do is put in our lead very carefully, because it does weigh a good bit. And we don't want it to break up our beaker. Now that we have that in there, turn it around to the front so we can see the graduation. Even though that, well, I guess we won't even bother with that because that doesn't matter either. Really, all that needs to be done here is you need to pour in enough nitric acid to just cover the light. And there it is, the light is covered. And immediately we start to see a reaction happening. I don't know if uh, you can see that there on the camera or not, but it's a lot of bubbling going on. Yeah, you can see the bubbles here coming off of the lead itself. And so this reaction is moving along quite nicely. However, to speed it up, we are going to add a little bit of heat to it. So we come over to our hot plate here. You don't have to use a fancy hot plate for this because you're not going to be using the magnetic stirring. So if all you have is just your standard burner type hot plate, that's fine. And we're just going to crank the heat up here on medium low setting. And before too long here, what we can see is the liberation of the nitrogen dioxide again coming off of this, which is the reddish brown, highly toxic gas. I love that. I'll push to the side over there. We want to keep it in the middle so that we have no surface area contact with the uh, nitric acid. And so we just let this react for a while, and uh, you will know when it is done because there will not be any more elemental lead left in your vessel. So let's just let this react for a while, and I will come back and show you what it looks like after the reaction gets underway. Alright, so we can see here the reaction is underway. The fumes coming off of the top there. Those are our nitrogen dioxide fumes. You can also see that the acid has started to turn a color. And that is also a good indication that our reaction is going forth nicely. And so uh, again, we just have to uh, wait for a little while until all of the leg goes away. And then I will show you how to extract the lead nitrate from the nitric acid solution. However, that being said, once this reaction is complete, there should be little to no nitric acid left in the vial, as we will have consumed it all, or at least most of it, during the reaction. Here's what the reaction looks like up close and personal. You can really see the liberation of the nitrogen dioxide coming off. You can see our lead in the bottom there and all that bubbling going on. That is the nitric acid working on the lead. And you may notice that I have some stuff floating in the top here. And what that is, is that is actually just impurities that are floating in my product. And that is because the lead that I have, I have actually mined from uh, uh, basically just tire weights that I found laying around. And even though I've cleaned them up before I melted them down into one solid ingot, there must have still been a little bit of soil remaining on them, because that is now what we are seeing. Normally when you run this reaction, you don't get any types of impurities in there. Also, that's going to be something that I have to deal with that you guys will not have to. I recommend just using a good source of lead for this, or it's just fishing sinkers, because you will have pure lead there and 
you should not have any contaminants on them if you get them straight out of the package and don't try to use used fishing sinkers. And so uh, that's what the reaction looks like. A little bit closer up. And we'll come back when the reaction has come to a s stop here. So our reaction is still underway. I just wanted to show you what I have done here. This is a little trick that I had just picked up over the years. Uh, and you can see that I have a little round bottom flask sitting atop the beaker and in it is cold water. And what that is doing is it is helping to condense any of the uh, nitric acid vapor that is coming up and allowing it to fall back down into the beaker, uh, therefore uh, reducing the amount of nitric acid that we have to use in this reaction here. Um, if I zoom in here, you can probably start to see some there. It goes a drip right there. You're about to see it fall down into solution. There it goes. And so uh, by doing that, then we are reducing the amount of nitric acid that we have to use for this reaction because we are essentially just recycling the same nitric acid. Uh, if you don't have a round bottom flask, uh, you cannot do this. However, I figured I would show it to you uh, just in case you do have a round bottom flask at home and you, you want to go ahead and do this. Um, without doing this procedure here, you will use a little bit more nitric acid because as it boils off, you're going to need to add more. And so this is just basically a nitric acid conservation method. Another thing I should probably mention to you guys is periodically throughout this reaction, you're going to want to take a glass stir bar or some type of uh, glass because glass will not react with the nitric acid. You can also use like a uh, disposable plastic spoon or knife or whatever to do this, but you just kind of want to poke around your piece of lead that is at the bottom. And the reason for this is because after it reacts long enough, it will actually start to get coated with a layer of lead nitrate. And this layer of lead, nit lead nitrate, pardon me, uh, it will effectively reduce the way that the nitric acid works on the lead itself, on the elemental lead. And that's because it forms uh, basically a layer over top of it, which then the nitric acid has to try to contend with that layer and break through it before it can get down to the elemental lead. And it will not be able to do so since the layer is actually a nitrate layer. And so to get around this, you just, like I said, you just stir the lead around a little bit, you knock off the nitrate layer, and you, then you will immediately see the reaction pick back up and a lot of bubbling start to occur again on the piece of elemental lead. Okay, it's been about an hour and our reaction is done. There is no more elemental lead left in there. And if you can see, there is now a nice layer of white powder at the bottom. And what you are looking at there, that white powder, is our target product. That is our lead nitrate. And we'll see even more because there is some still stuck in solution. That is why our nitric acid has the cloudy color to it. As you can see, I still have the round bottom flask with water in it on top there. And that's because our acid is still cooling down. You can still see the fumes floating around in there. And so that's just going to help keep condensing the acid and letting it fall back down in there while it's cooling so that we don't lose any more than what we absolutely have to since nitric acid is very precious as we pretty much have to just make it ourselves because if we were to buy it it were to run about six hundred dollars a gallon US so it is uh, pretty much even more expensive than gold that being said, uh, we're just going to wait now for our acid to cool down and for the rest of the small little nanoparticulates and so forth to fall out of suspension and then we will filter our solution. Alright guys, our nitric acid solution with our lead nitrate in it has been cooling to expedite the process. I actually put mine in the fridge, that's why you can see this little bit of condensation on there and now you should be able to see there are two distinct layers you've got your layer of nitric acid up here and all this white powder down here that is our target product that is our lead nitrate 
So the next thing that we need to do here is we need to set up for vacuum filtration and filter off this product. Okay, so here we are. We're all set up for vacuum filtration. We've got our threaded filter, our vacuum line hooked up, our collection container. You guys might be wondering why I have this piece of wood sitting underneath there. And this is actually something that I just made because my uh, vacuum setup I usually use off the ground. I took this piece of plywood and you can see I kind of just uh, beveled a little saucer shape into it with a wood turning lathe and what that does is that allows me to uh, set this guy on here like this and then I take what is essentially a tile level and I can set that right down in there and then this allows me to be able to just kind of turn and rotate until I am completely level so that is the uh, whole reason that that board is there nothing really special it's just because that I am doing this off of the ground and so uh, I'm not going to subject you guys to the noise of the vacuum here I'm just going to go ahead and pour this in and vacuum filter it and we'll show you the next steps from there okay so here's our target chemical this is our lead nitrate and up against the white background that I have it on it looks somewhat gray However, the color that you are going for here is a white to a very pale gray color. The more pure the lead that you're using, the whiter the final product will be. The little tiny bit of gray that you see in there, um, that's just impurities that got picked up. However, there's not enough in there that it will hinder this as far as any reactions go. This will react just fine with any reaction. That requires uh, lead nitrate, as you see, PBNO32. That is the formula for lead nitrate. I always label my plates. The only thing that you guys really didn't see in the vacuum filtration step was I gave it a couple washings with cold distilled water. And the reason that I use cold water is because lead nitrate is actually fairly soluble in water. However, the solubility curve increases dramatically with the temperature, so the colder that the water is, the less product you're going to lose through um, it going right down through the, the frit when you add the water to it. So cold water is best. This is, uh, here you can see what the filter looks like. I got it pretty much as clean as I can get it. A little bit of residue around the edges, but there's, as you can see, there's nothing standing on the frit anymore, so now I get to clean that out. Oh, I should probably mention, if you do not have a vacuum filtration set up, you can use a gravity filtration set up for this. Nitric acid, even though it is technically a stronger acid than what sulfuric acid is, has different properties. It does not eat through fabric unforgivingly like sulfuric acid does however if you were to spill it on your clothing it will bleach your clothing out so it will turn your clothing pink or brown or whatever color it happens to be underneath all the dye found that out the hard way guys and so uh that brings me back to our target product here our lead nitrate as you can see it's a little bit clumpy right now that is just because even though I pulled a vacuum on it for about 15 minutes after all of the fluid had come through the fret, I was not able to dry it completely. And that is why we transfer it to the paper plate here. And what we'll do is we'll just leave it out in the air for a while. Again, I am outside in a garage. It is roughly 80 degrees Fahrenheit out here. So it will dry rather quickly uh, just in the ambient temperature. After it dries a little bit, we're going to periodically come back and try to break these clumps up and spread them out as uniformly and thinly as possible. That will let them dry faster. <coughs> Excuse me, I had a tickle in my throat there. And so um, that is pretty much uh, all there is to making lead nitrate. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
If you really like these and you want to keep seeing them, please subscribe to my Patreon page. And if you want to, you can donate money to my cause, which I will say on every video, any money that I get through my patrons is going to go directly back into chemicals, lab supplies, etc. that I need to make these videos possible and keep them coming out to you with new and fresh material. So, lead nitrate is done. The next video I'm going to show you is going to be how to make potassium iodide. And what we are doing is we are leading up to making lead iodide here. Which is just some uh, all around pretty chemistry. It's not really useful for anything, but it is very pretty to look at. So I figure it is worth showing you guys how to do. Up, oh, this is Chaos Chem, done with another video. Hope you guys enjoyed and be safe.